But let's talk about your Dallas Mavericks. And particularly, we're not going to talk about Luka and Kyrie nearly as much. We're going to talk about the, the, the supporting cast because they had a fantastic game last night. They, they beat the Kings a lot to a little is what it felt like more than anything. And some of this, some of this was uh, in, in part because this dude was cooking. More than five minutes gone by, third quarter. Extra pass. Washington rattles in the tray. P.J. Washington, he knocked down his first three three-pointers in a row. And, um, I mean, he was not the only one who had a good outing in this one. The final was 132-96. to Like I said, a lot to a little for your Mavericks. Yet another instance of their defense holding a team under 100. And the defense feels like it's become more of a of something that you could believe to be somewhat of a given with this team. But what I want to talk about here, Blake, we, we've kind of talked about, um, you know, the defense and the way some of these things have changed, but we've also talked about the way it feels like there's been an identity change mm -hmm. with this Mavericks team where if they don't knock down shots, they can find a way to win games, right? It's 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 kind of weird, man. They, they're getting different antlers of winning, different antlers. And apparently what it seems like is with that identity change, if they do knock down shots, you end up with a 56% a three-point shooting night and a win by 30-something points, right? Like, yeah. this was a wild, wild game. And it makes me ask the question, right? Like, was a performance like this where you get P.J. Washington 4-6 of six from deep, where you get Tim Hardaway Jr. also 4-6 of six from deep, you get Dante Exum not only taking three-pointers but knocking down three-pointers to the tune of two of three from deep. Is this, uh, like, in, 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 I guess, uh, to quote, uh, in, or I guess somewhat paraphrase uh, Eminem, would a real Mavericks supporting cast please stand up? Is it this, or is it what we've seen of late? Because I think that's going to tell us a lot about what the aptitude of this team is in the postseason. Yeah, I, I think we're starting to see who the Mavs truly are. And I just did a quick little Google search for the Sacramento Kings, their defensive rating for the season is right at average in the league at 115. So before people start coming in like, oh, the Kings just played terrible defense. That's the reason that the Mavs just started lighting it up from the outside. I, I, I would disagree. The, the Kings are about an average defensive team and the Mavs are one of the worst until this trade deadline where since February 5th, they're 17 and six, third in the NBA, offensive rating of third, defensive rating of seventh since February 5th, like I said, of 112, net rating of nine, which is third, and that's even with that little uh, split that they went on. So I think we're starting to see, you saw the up, you saw the down. I think PJ Washington is getting comfortable. And I kind of went back and looked at some of those games. Remember when PJ was in a, a I don't want to say even a slump, where he just couldn't make anything. He was missing every yeah. three, it felt like. I think he was a little hobbled, not like injury full, like I can't play in the game. I just think I noticed he wasn't getting a lot of lift on those shots. And you're seeing the confidence has stayed the same. I like the confidence. That sure. was the main thing. Like I didn't want a Josh Green incident where you're passing up shots and now you're a liability on the court. And it was noted the other day that Luka and Kyrie aren't getting exactly the highest quality of shots because of this new lineup they went with with Derrick Jones Jr., PJ, and Gafford. You have three quote-unquote non-shooters on the, on the court. When PJ is knocking them down... This team becomes very lethal. And Derrick Jones Jr., I think when he's left wide open, we saw it early in the season, can knock down a good amount of threes as well. But now that you're kind of seeing it all come together, I, I truly do think this is kind of the real Mavs right here. And, and it, it makes me think in my head, what is their ceiling? I think their ceiling is effort. And if they give that effort, I don't know why they don't go to the Western Conference Finals. I think this team has wow. one of the higher ceilings in the West right now. Now, their floor could also be said to be kind of low, but I think when you have Luka and Kyrie, the floor is almost set at a certain place where they're going to get theirs and probably give you around 60 to 55 a night, no matter what. Yeah, so, I mean, to get a little bit of an idea of if this is real, what it could look like, I take you to the Mind the Game podcast, which is the collaboration between J.J. Redick and LeBron James, and they've just been, they've been really been diving into real nerdy X's and O's of basketball, and at some point they were talking about defensively what you do on the pick and roll and blitzing um, really good players, and they obviously Luka Doncic comes up as he's been the most blitz player in the league. What's interesting about Luka, I think he's one of a handful of guys in this era that can make any pass against the double team. Any James is one of them. Yep. You you are for sure. Luka is one of them. Yep. So why are you blitzing him? I don't understand it, especially with the shooting they they surround yeah. him too. 
it doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah, it doesn't because he's going to make every read. And when Tim Tim Hardaway is hitting six or seven threes, you're done. Yeah, Kyrie's going to get what Kyrie's going to do. What Kyrie does. Yeah, Luca's going to do what he does. But when you get Tim Hardaway hitting six or seven threes, and in our game earlier this year, we blitzed Luca and Dante Exum hit five. Oh, that's right, yeah. six threes. Yeah, that that. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron James laughs at the possibilities when you have your off-ball guys knocking down shots. The thing I found interesting though there, there though, and I know a lot of people it probably perked your ears up. First name that comes out of his mouth is Tim Hardaway Jr. knocking down shots. Mm-hmm. After that, Don T. Exum. And it does make me wonder how how in tune he has been, because he has his own team that he's paying attention to that he's worried about, but how in tune he's been with the Mavericks now. Because I also wonder, like, do you look around and you go, I mean, we know Tim can be hot or cold. Dante Exum doesn't take a lot of shots. Who are the guys that you look at that you go, those are shooters? And one of the things that I also come back to is I was thinking about it, I was like, man. The ways in which this team knocked down threes in this way, I was like, I, I view Sacramento as not a great defensive team, and that's not quite true. Yeah. You mentioned it. They're about defensive rating, they're 16th yeah. right now. But what it, that did bring me to was, well, how how well do they could uh or how well do teams do shooting the three against the the Kings? And uh literally they are the second our teams shoot the second best gotcha. in the league when they're uh, on three pointers when they're playing the Sacramento Kings. Utah Jazz is the only team that shoots or that has teams shoot better against them playing three. And even if you just want to condense it to recently, in the last 15 games, the Sacramento Kings are allowing 37.4% from three point percentage or from three point land, which is good for tied for third best for uh, opponent. So teams shoot well from three against this team. I don't I don't know exactly why I'm not breaking it, but I, I do wonder like, does this end up being a little bit of an anomaly? This the type oh, of game that we the, just saw. The, the game we just saw, I think, was an anomaly. I, I even said it right when we were kind of like getting off and heading home. I was like, yeah, getting we off this. of work. Yes. <laughs> I didn't have to do that, but I decided to. It's only 730. Did you have more points that you'd like to make? <laughs> I couldn't have worded that more. <laughs> terribly. I could have let you keep going. However, <laughs> when we were exiting the building from our work. Correct. Yes. Um, I was like, we won by 30, 40. We're up by 30, 40. And I was like, that's not just a 30, 40 point win. That's a 30, 40 point win against a team you're racing against in the standings. That was supposed to be this tight ball game that you they played you really well last time. De'Aaron Fox lit it up. You're down 0-2 and you just smoked them like they were one of the bottom teams in the West or something. So I was like, that is really important. I do think it's an anomaly. I don't think you're going to shoot close to 60% against every team. And is Tim Hardaway going to go four for six and PJ going to go four for six next couple games? I'm going to break your, I'm gonna break the news to you guys. Probably not. Probably not going to happen. I don't think they're going to go four for six going for it i think they're more two for seven guys unfortunately i think if pj can make two or three and 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 make or miss less than that like you're you're, you're doing it. if he goes two for four most nights i think you're feeling good or even two for five and that's that's the thing is like i was thinking what does it take for your supporting cast mm-hmm. to give because if your supporting cast is not knocking down shots where it felt like they just couldn't knock down anything as you mentioned if that's the case you have an opportunity to do some level of competing in the West, but I don't know that it's something, uh, you know, real. If they obviously if they knock down sixty percent, you could do anything that you damn well please. I, I don't, I don't know if you but notice, but I they, did want to get to that midpoint. Ahead. If you're shooting somewhere in like forty percent, I think that things really open up in a big way to where you can have some real impact when you get to the postseason. Yeah, I, I think you can because that that Kings game they played them a little bit differently. They were. Sabonis was pre-rotating off of PJ Washington in the corner. He was taking away that rim roller of Derek of Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford. When Luca was setting that pick and roll, then they notoriously throw that alley oop. We've seen it over and over. Franchise dunks, all these alley oops. So Sabonis watches film, and when they set that pick and roll, he was rotating off PJ Washington, and they were packing the paint a lot. The Mavs have been killing teams in the paint recently, scoring 60, 50 in the point. They scored 44 last night, still more than the Kings. But they were letting the three-point shot be shot, and the Mavs made them pay, and they hit it. It's a pick-your-poison. Like, I think this is one of the things that really upsets me when people say there's no defense played in the NBA. It's one of the things that J.J. Redick and LeBron James were talking about on this episode of the Mind the Game podcast that came out is the game. People are so good at offense now when it comes to, like, they we figured out the game of basketball largely if you have the right personnel. And someone like Luka Doncic makes the personnel right to the point where – you you have to pick your poison, but there's no you're not going to stop everything. 
And that, Especially with two top 10 scorers. That's yeah. exactly what you're talking about there where, okay, the Kings are going to try and take this way, the idea of that getting to the bucket, the diving to the bucket, all those things. All right, you're leaving this opportunity to pass out to the wing and knock down shots. And I think that's, I, I honestly do believe that might be a good amount of the decisions that a lot of teams will make now yeah, that then brings yeah. it back around. If you're able to knock down shots, I, this could be interesting. And if, if you're another team, I think, you, I think you live with that. I think if... The great part if you're a Mavs fan is I feel like Luca and those pick and roll really a lot of the times makes the correct decision. Every once in a while he'll throw. All the time. Every time. Uh, every once in a while he'll throw up a shot. You're like, oh, I don't love it. But for the most part, especially when it's a pass. Oh, if it's a pass, I can almost close my eyes and know he made the right pass. So Gafford sets that high pick and roll. They run it all the time. Gafford is rim rolling. That that weak side big, the guy who's guarding the guy in the three-point line, has one, two choices to make. Am I going to stick with P.J. Washington? Tim Hardaway, Derek Jones Jr., Josh Green in the corner? Or am I going to help my big and rotate and help Gafford going up for the lob or the quick slip pass from Luka? And that decision that he makes, Luka is, is watching his eyes and going to throw it to the opposite player. And I think you're living with, hey, I'm PJ's not going to make 50% of his shots. Tim's not going to make 50% of his shots. I'm going to take away this, this lively and Gafford lob or quick pass. Now, when those guys, we saw it last night, they were making it, and that's why you win by 40. Like, right. The, you're making that decision, and I think when you have enough guys, Tim can be off, but PJ's on. Tim can Tim can be on, but Josh, like, you have options where it's not you're just relying on one guy, and I think that's what makes you a championship-caliber team, not where you're just like, Tim, we need you to hit four threes, otherwise we're going to lose. And when you have other different guys that can step up and hit that, I think that's what makes you a championship-caliber team. And... I would say that's your words. Uh, however, you're not the only one who has similar perspectives. Let's talk to uh, Tim Legler, noted Mavs lover uh, from ESPN. And then Dallas, uh, easy win last night over Sacramento. Luca and Kyrie combining for 52 and 14. And I know you've been saying oh, yeah. it for a while on this show. You find them very dangerous. Yeah, this is the real threat, I think, in so far right now for me in the Western Conference to the Denver Nuggets. Th this is the best team Luca's had. And that's saying a lot. Because you know how great he has been in big moments. But now he seems to have found a perfect chemistry with Kyrie Irving. They've added some pieces to improve their depth. They've got athletes in the middle. They've got shooting. And right now, they've got a swagger about them. They're playing their best basketball at the right time. There you go. That's him talking about Luke. this being the best team that Luke has been a part of. He also went further to say that the Mavs are his, what he believes to be the biggest threat to the Nuggets. <laughs> and, of course, if you're playing like this, I think that that's clear. It's clear how that happens, how that works. Yeah, I, I just think the the offensive output that is around in the West, think about all the teams. I think on paper, everyone said, oh, the Suns, the Suns. They they do not have the, the offensive firepower that I think people see on paper. Bradley, they have no chemistry. They have a bunch of ISO players that are very good at basketball, but it is not working well together right now. Kevin Durant is still at the top of his game. Don't get me wrong. Go watch the Dallas Mavericks play a full game, guys, and you see they're diving. Your best player, Luka and Kyrie, are diving after loose balls of 25 on the road dealing with injuries. Like, that shows you the difference. And watch some of these other teams kind of lollygagging. I just think the Mavs are really bought in right now. And if they keep playing the way that they're playing, I think the only thing that can stop them is, is themselves right now. And what can make this even more interesting, they'll play again on Friday against the Kings. And if they win that game, they put themselves in great uh, a great circumstance to not have to be in the play-in. In fact, uh, playoffstatus.com that keeps Where we at uh, right now? percentages on the likelihood of you landing in a particular playoff spot. The the highest percentage chance of a particular playoff spot for the Mavericks is indeed at 32%. Sixth place okay. is the most likely place that they end up. Oddly enough, or funny enough, the second highest odds, 27%, is fifth. Let's do it. And with that, you might be interested in the game that's happening right now um, on TNT, or sorry, ESPN, between the Philadelphia 76ers and the Los Angeles Clippers, where the Sixers lead by 10 against the Clippers, 50-40, to 40, and the Clippers have had a little bit of a slide. Could the could the Clippers maybe slide to a place, or could the Pelicans also, I think the Pelicans are playing significantly better, but could the Clippers slide to a place where maybe they fall far enough and allow the Mavericks to even slide up to fifth? Those are the things that are happening in the West as we head down the stretch.